Lies of P. I never thought that I would play this game, but I'm glad I did. At the very beginning, this game to me looked like a small studio take advantage of an old fable story Pinocchio, the popular game genre of Souls-like and combined with peculiar art style to grab the attention of the audience and attempt to make some quick cash. On top of that, I thought all the characters in Animal Helmets looked ridiculous. I had a chance to test this game for free on PlayStation 5, but I did not like the game either, because the first few levels are most likely designed for new players. The levels are very linear, and the enemies were boring for a seasoned gamer who was spoiled by all the front soft games. Also, I was still enjoying Baldur's Gate 3, everything else just couldn't compete. The reason I finally decided to give this game a try was because there was no other games that looked interesting enough to play. Back then, I just finished Baldur's Gate two times over. Starfield was a disappointment because it doesn't allow you to land to a planet directly from space or take off from a planet into the space in real time. And my highly anticipated Lord of Fallen 2 was buggy and having performance issues. Somehow, Lies of P was rated very positive on Steam, so I decided to give it a try. And then I just couldn't stop. I realized this game is so good, almost in the same rank with other fronts of the Souls series. This game has the classic Unreal 4 engine look. Nothing groundbreaking, but it works and looks pretty enough. Performance-wise, the game runs smoothly with DLSS and completely bug-free in my playthrough. Soundtracks in boss fight are usually the climax in other Souls games. You should recognize which fight it is by just listening to the music. But in Lies of P, all the soundtracks are like stock music and hardly memorable. Except for the music records you found during the playthrough, they are pretty good. In the early stage of the game, I was not impressed. Part of the reason was because many players might just like me, rarely look backward or upwards, and missed all the spectacular views above and behind. Until the game led me to a lifted place and I finally realized the landscape of Krad is beautiful. The further I dig into this game, the more I was impressed. The Crystal Palace level was truly breathtaking. It was at that point I knew I felt in love with this game. I wish the earlier level of the game could be more undulated, so the players can see the magnificent landscape earlier that give a better first impression. I also wish the game was not so linear. So, the players can see the level from many different angles. That way, the world would feel much larger and alive. The enemies in the game also did not impress me in the first place because they looked generic, was easy to fight, and the animations looked choppy. But later in the game, the enemies start to get very creative. I especially enjoyed this puppet clown with a hammer in each hand. Just look at him go, truly terrifying. And his movements were the most funny ones I've seen in any other games. Besides from the creative looking and animations, they are also fun to fight with. Because although their attacks are very dramatic, but they are still easy to read. Combined with their beefy health bar means this is not kind of enemy you can brute your way out. Defeating them feels fair and gives you a strong sense of accomplishment. Here are some other enemies I found really fun. However, there are also many attacking movements that are unclear and rather hard to read. So, in the first few attempts on an enemy, you really can't be sure at which point of the attack animation, and the actual striking is way too fast and leave no time to react. It's not difficult to overcome this problem by just do more practice and get familiarized with the attacking pattern, but I hope new ways can do better in the sequel of the game. Another thing I want to point out and appreciate is that do you remember those huge arrows in Dark Souls? They are extremely loud, but in Lies of P, it's no longer an issue. I'm glad the new ways turned its volume down. Character design-wise, it took me some time to get used to it. Nowadays, video games tend to make characters look rugged and realistic. The Asian developer's approach is a breath of fresh air. In Lies of P, the look of the characters are intentionally made to look pretty to an almost embarrassing level. Although their face look rather blank and lack of stories to me, but it's easy to get used to it and start to appreciate it, even more so after I dig deeper into the story. In other Souls games, all the characters are somewhat depressing, 
but in less of P, players now have Gemini to talk with. You can consider Gemini as a narrator in the game, who always speaks enthusiastically. Gemini also makes a cute cricket noise when talking, which is a direct reference to the novel. The friendly NPCs you encounter during the playthrough are all wearing animal head pieces. I thought it was a goofy idea, but they turned out to be brilliant. In a third-person game, the face of characters are often too small to recognize and remember. Facial impressions are also barely visible during the conversation. The animal head, however, expressed the personality of the characters pretty well, also made them easily distinguishable and memorable, like this German Shepherd guy. He looks and sounds so heroic and trustworthy, isn't he? I think it's also part of the reason why characters in Soul Scheme are all wearing helmets. The combat system in Less of P merged everything that's special in the past Souls series with some improvement. All the abilities work together flawlessly. None of them are overpowered, and players need to strategize the use of their options. I also noticed this game has a pretty accurate hitbox, so if you can control the distance like a pro, you could technically attack enemies in close distance while avoiding enemies' that attack at the same time, or even using gestures to make fun of your enemies. I really like that you can regain your last healing item, which is the pulse chargers in this game, so you will have much more confidence when consuming them because you know it's not the end of the world after you used up all your chargers. The dodge and dodge roll has noticeably shorter invulnerable window in this game, so they are no longer the safest answer to all attacks. Besides, you won't be able to stagger the enemy that way. Parrying is very powerful in this game, which can literally block any sort of damage, like this huge RPG shot from tower and this gigantic energy attack from boss enemies. It is also extremely satisfying to parry, because it also can destroy enemies' weapon, making them look miserable with only a handle as a weapon to attack you. Blocking is always a low-risk way of defense, but it would cost your health, stamina, and weapon durability. When you block an attack, a portion of the health will turn gray, but you can get that part of the health back by parrying or fighting back. This system heavily rewards aggressive playstyle and it's actually pretty forgiving if you try to play bold and attempt to land attacking patterns, parrying and fighting back, and maybe sometimes using blocking or dashing to endure attacks that are harder to manage. I think Lies of P has a better weapon durability system than all other Souls games. The weapon durability in this game is now part of resource management. Players need to learn to manage durability in order to sustain an extended combat, and decide when to parry and when to dodge, for saving durability, otherwise they have to sacrifice the attacking window to repair the weapon using Grinder instead. Legion Arm is a great addition to the combat on top of all other moves. It causes resources to use, but unlike in Sakura Shadow Die Twice, where you cannot use the prosthetic arm whatsoever after you deplete all your paper dolls. In Lies of P, players can regain Legion after resting at Stargazer, so player characters won't get weaker after multiple failed attempts because of resource depletion. Fable art is very similar to weapon art in other Souls games, but you won't be able to spam it all the time. Instead, you need to attack the enemies to gain Fable, and spend Fable using Fable arts. What's very special in this game is the weapon assembly, where players can assemble their own weapon to fit their fighting style and stats, provides more freedom in combat. For example, if you want to use a heavy weapon while having quick attacking speed, you can attach a hammerhead onto a dagger handle. It may look ridiculous, but sometimes it just works. I had tons of fun with this system, and I think I never had the same good experience in any other games. Finally, the items in the game are well sorted. This game thankfully put consumable items and throwable items in different categories, saved me a lot of time on looking for them. The throwable items are quite powerful in this game, the projectile speed is quite fast, and the attacking range is surprisingly far, making them a true secret weapon that will help you hack through a lot of tough fights. There's a new type of throwable item in the game, which instead of flying toward enemies, they can be casted as a ground effect, dealing massive AoE damage in close quarters. One way I love to utilize them is when the enemies are staggered, I can cast a ground effect underneath their feet, follow up an attack, and then execute which can extend the time enemy stays in one place and maximize the damage. Players can apply additional elemental damage to the weapon, similar to how it is done in Soul series, but what's different in Lies of P is players can have one free elemental grinder stone every time they rest, so players can use it whenever it's needed without pressure. 
During the playthrough, I rarely use the Vision Stone. It takes relatively long time to cast in fast-paced combat, and it doesn't refresh after resting at Stargazer. If you look closely, the effect of Vision Stone are actually pretty strong, but because of the number is limited, I only use them as the last resort, and I think that might be the actual purpose of this item. All in all, I think this whole combat system is brilliant. It's like playing a card game which you need to play it right to maximize game and mitigate the risk. Many people think this game is too difficult, even more difficult than FromSoft games. But if players pay attention to learn the attacking patterns, invest more on defense items, and utilize all the different tools with a strategy, Less of P is in fact pretty forgiving. I don't want to spoil the story of the game too much, and the storytelling is not my strong suit. But I have to say, the story is just deep enough to keep me curious, but because the level in this game is very linear, story items and scenes are almost impossible to miss, so I could understand most of the story in just one playthrough. I have to say, for the first time to develop a 3D RPG, it's very impressive for new ways to do almost everything right. Also, keeping things small and linear is absolutely the right approach. Amazing job, new ways. Now I'm all hyped for the sequel of this game. I hope next time, new ways could bring more interesting mechanics like weapon assembly and guard weekend to the table, instead of improving things we already seen before. For people who enjoy Soul series, buy this game without second thought. But for those who are new to this type of games, the merging of all different mechanics in past Souls games could be a bit overwhelming. But if you be patient about it or having someone guiding you, you are gonna have tons of fun after passing the learning curve. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.